In this video series, we'll take a look at our place in the universe, but we'll do so with pictures of various kinds. So it'll be a photographic tour of our solar system, Milky Way galaxy, and the universe. Now here's a picture or a diagram you'll find on the internet of our solar system. A familiar scene, we have our sun here at the center, we have the inner planets in orbit around the sun, we have the outer planets in orbit around the sun, and of course it's gravity that is maintaining the orbits of these planets. In the late 60s and early 70s, NASA sent astronauts to the moon. And so astronauts have actually walked on the moon. This picture was taken while in orbit around the moon, and it's a beautiful sight of our Earth rising against the horizon of the moon here. And this was in the early 70s when the environmental movement was really picking up steam. And this picture sort of uh, encapsulated the whole purpose of the movement is to protect and preserve our beautiful home. So this kind of picture really impressed upon people that our home is a paradise, an island paradise surrounded by cold, dark space. This is our home. It's our only home that we've ever known. Can we live elsewhere in our solar system? Perhaps someday. But this is the one that we're living on now, so it makes sense to uh, take good care of it. Now, we should remember that, of course, it takes a year for the Earth to orbit the Sun, and the Earth has a satellite that we call our Moon, and the Moon orbits the Earth. It takes about a month to do that. Sometimes, as the Moon is orbiting, it will position itself so that the Sun will cast the Moon's shadow onto the surface of the Earth. And at that location, that's called a total solar eclipse. In 2017, these pictures were taken in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Here we see the sun. Actually, you can see some sunspots there. And then in the subsequent pictures, we see the moon as it moves in its orbit in front of the sun. Here's a wide angle view of the moment of totality. And this lasted for two minutes or so. Using a different camera with a longer lens, 300 millimeter lens, the moment of totality. It's a beautiful sight. Here we see some solar prominences here. And two years later, in 2019, off the coast of Chile, this is what a total solar eclipse looked like. If you ever have the chance in your life to go see one, I highly recommend it. You will not forget it. It's one of the most beautiful things in nature. In this picture, we see on the left, we see our sun again. And on the right, we see a picture of the night sky. And of course, all the points of light are stars. This green band here is a laser pointer pointed up in the sky. Now, the point here is that our sun is just like these stars, except we're seeing our sun from a much closer distance. So in other words, our sun is a star as seen from close up. If we were to take our sun and move it to the distance of these stars, it would just be a point of light like all the other stars. Now, as it turns out, these stars are very, very far away, and most of the stars we see in the night sky are near neighbors of our sun. Here we see sort of a diagram of our solar neighborhood with our sun in the middle here, and here are some of the stars uh, that are near neighbors. But again, we call them near neighbors, yet the distances between stars are measured on the order of light years. So a light year is the distance that light travels in a year, and it's really far it would take several light years to get even to the nearest stars. Now, what do stars look like when we get closer to them? Well, recently, this summer, July 2020, uh, NASA released a decade's worth of photographs of the sun, and they put it together in a time lapse. So here's our sun. It does rotate itself, and we see it is just this giant ball of hot gas glowing bright. So you may know that inside the cores of stars, there's a nuclear fusion reaction happening, and that releases energy and heat and light, and it makes the surface of the star really hot, and hot things glow. And so a star is a really, really big ball of hot gas. Other telescopes have taken a closer look at the surface of our sun. And this is what that looks like. 
through these special telescopes. We see the churning surface of the sun. Now, our sun then, of course, makes up most of the mass of our solar system. It is huge, so this, this picture is not to scale. This diagram is not to scale. Um, but uh, most of the mass of our solar system is residing in the sun itself. But let's talk about the planets again. So, if the Earth is over here and Jupiter is over here, we're not going to be able to see Jupiter in the night sky. So it'll be daytime. If we're here on Earth, it'll be daytime and won't, we won't be able to see Jupiter in its position in its orbit here. But when the Earth and Jupiter are on the same side of the Sun, then we can see Jupiter in the night sky. In fact, uh, just again in the summer of 2020, there was a, uh, a few days when five planets were visible in the night sky. And here's a picture taken north, about two hours north of Los Angeles. It's a panorama, so capturing sort of a, a, a wide field of view here. And we've got four of those five planets in this picture. They are Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Off to the right here is the Milky Way. Now on the same night, this is with a sort of a wide angle lens, but on the same night, uh, I pointed a small telescope at Jupiter. And this is what I saw. Here's Jupiter. And here are what appear to be three moons. In fact, it turns out this one here, I think, are two moons, just a different place in the orbit. They sort of overlap. Uh, but we see several of the moons of Jupiter. Now, this is a telescope. It's a 360 millimeter lens, so it's a small telescope. And yet, Jupiter's so small. Can't see much detail here. Well, that just shows us that Jupiter is really, really far away. Sometimes, um, as the Earth is orbiting the Sun, one of the inner planets, either Mercury or Venus, will move in a position between the Earth and the Sun. And that happened, again, in the summer-ish of uh, 2020, or the spring. Here we see the Sun, and this little spot here is Mercury. Here we see it cropped in, and a bit more cropping. This was when Mercury was transiting across the face of the Sun. So as Mercury was orbiting, its orbital path took it in front of the Sun. And so photographers around the world tried to cap pictures, or capture uh, pictures of it. Our familiar internet diagram also shows this thing over here, a comet. Now comets are balls of ice and rock and stuff that are in orbit around the sun but when they get into the inner orbits sometimes we can see them from earth and in the, again the summer of 2020 a newly discovered comet called comet neowise made its appearance this was taken uh near lone pine california in the alabama hills So when we think about our solar system, there are lots of really interesting things to learn about each and every one of the planets in our solar system. But of course, there is one planet where something truly amazing happened. And it is, of course, Earth, where life emerged on Earth. And today, uh, many of the living things on Earth, they survive as a consequence of the energy from the sun. So photosynthetic organisms capture sunlight energy to produce food, and that nourishes lots of the ecosystems on Earth. But it is striking that our planet is covered with living things. And so far as we know, it's the only one. There is a question about Mars. Scientists are very, very eager to get to Mars with better instruments and ultimately humans to, to find out whether life ever emerged on Mars. But we know life is on Earth. If life was also present on Mars, that suggests that perhaps life is relatively easy to do if the planets are in habitable zones around a stable star. So this is an exciting time uh, in, uh, in science. Now, the story of life on Earth is, is quite amazing, really. We start with a lifeless rock, the early Earth, and we end up with a rock with life, with millions of species covering every corner of the globe. NASA defines life as a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution, and we'll unpack that definition uh, later. 
But the key step was the formation of the first living things, what we call cells. So life is cellular on Earth. And these cells emerged somehow, somewhere on Earth. And again, we'll take a look at uh, what is known about that. And then once cells emerged, they reproduced and colonized the Earth and then evolved into more complicated living things. So this is going to be our little icon for the tree of life. We'll learn that Mr. Darwin will invite us to think that all living species on Earth are related by common ancestry. So here we have the root of the tree of life, the origin of life. And over time, new species evolve. One species can evolve into two, and two into four, etc. And so we have millions of living uh, species on Earth today, all sharing a common ancestry back to those first living things on Earth a long time ago. In the next part in the video series, we'll situate our solar system within a larger context, the Milky Way galaxy.